In this video, I test the cheapest precision scale on Amazon, coming in at $7.99 Amazon Prime. In this video, I'm going to put this super cheap scale up against my $750 A&D FX 120i. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. This is the first of many precision scale reviews I'm going to do, both standalone scales and scales that are integrated with electronic powder dispensers. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications. We've got a lot of good related content coming up. In this video, I'm going to show you what's in the box. We're going to get it set up. We're going to calibrate the scale. And then I'm going to look at different weights that are meaningful to reloaders. Three grains, 20 grains, 50 grains, 150 grains, and 250 grains. These would correspond to different charge weights that you're gonna have for things like a very light pistol load. For something like near 223, near 308, 150 grains is gonna be up there in the big magnums, and then 250 grains would be for something like 50 BMG. And if you're weighing cases for weight consistency, these weights are going to fall into those categories as well. What we're gonna cover is accuracy tests, precision tests, we're gonna look at drift, and then we're gonna look at the quality of the scale. So, having said all that, let's get this little box open. Still haven't looked inside. I literally went to Amazon.com, I searched on precision scale, and I ranked them all from price, lowest to highest, and this baby came in at $7.99, delivered. I mean, that's as much as I would expect to pay on shipping for a scale. So here it is, okay. The specs on this are, the capacity is 100 grams and the resolution is 0 0.01 grams. That maps to about 0.158 grains. So this does not have the level of resolution that you'd find on most reloading scales, which is 0.1 grains, but it is close. What was curious was on the Amazon page, it says CR2032 batteries. On the box, it says double triple A batteries. So let's see what the truth is here. And in typical cheap electronics fashion, it's difficult to get open. Okay, it is indeed two triple A batteries. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the batteries in. I'm gonna read the user manual, which looks quite extensive. Wow, both sides. <laughs> and I'm gonna let it power up, let it warm up for a while, which is always a good idea with a precision scale, and then we'll put this baby to the test. Okay, so I installed the batteries, which were indeed AAA batteries instead of CR2032 batteries, and followed the instructions as best I could to calibrate this scale. Here's the gotcha. So you turn on the scale, and then it says for calibration that we're supposed to hold the units key for three seconds. Well, there is no units key on this scale. But there is a mode button and it turns out that's the units key. So what you do is you press that button for a few seconds and it doesn't do anything. It's supposed to go into the calibration mode. I found out that what you have to do is hit the mode button one more time. Then you get cal and it says, hey, put on a 100 gram weight. I've got this precision lab grade weight that I showed in the AND FX120i video. We're gonna put that right on the platform here and it says pass. Now what happens here? It says 100.00. We're going to put that back on. 99.96. Okay. 99.95. This is the the same thing that happened the first time I calibrated this. So let's try calibrating this scale one more time. Mode. Okay. Hit mode one more time. Cal, 100 grams. Try number two. Pass, yay. 100.00, okay. 100.00. 100.00. The exact same thing happened the last time I calibrated this. The first time it was 99.96, recalibrated it again. 100.00 and it seems to be repeatable. So now that we've got the scale calibrated, let's go on to testing the precision and the accuracy. 
So both of the scales are now calibrated. Here's what we're gonna do. I've got a pan on the platform on the A and D here. We're gonna use this pan and zero it out on each scale. So the A and D is zeroed. Now I'm gonna put it on the cheap scale and we're gonna hit the tear button and that will go to 0, 0.00. Let's just check that real quick. Is it gonna go back to zero? It does indeed. Okay, now for each of these weights here, we're gonna pour a powder charge into the pan and it doesn't matter exactly what it is. We're gonna compare and use the weight displayed on the A and D as the truth, 2.90. I wanted to be down at about three grains to show a really, really light weight on these scales. So what is the cheap scale gonna say? 0.2, actually we need to go to mode grains. Okay, so 2.8 versus 2.9, so we're off by 0.1, which is actually quite a bit at three grains. Now let's see how repeatable we are. Three, three, three point two, whoa, <laughs> three point oh, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get approximately, I will use five repeatability tests here for precision for each of these weights. And then in the full write-up, I will supply all of the analytics on this data. But it looks like here we're plus or minus about 0.1 to 0.2 for maybe a total variance of about up to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, which is not super good. We're gonna validate over here that we're at 2.90. Yeah, that's very repeatable as we would expect. Okay, so that's our super lightweight. Moving on to the approximately uh, 224-ish. You'd have more like 25, but this is in the right domain here. Okay, put this on the A and D, see where we're at. 19.94, so we're 0 0.06 off. 19.94, let's remember that. And we've got 19.6, whoa. So that's over 0.3 off, not too good. 19.6. 20, 19 19.6, 19.6, 19.8, 19.6. So we can see we're getting at least 0.2 fluctuation here. Now part of what's going on here is the resolution of the scale is only 0.158 grains. So as it's going from one increment in its resolution to another, it's kind of jumping around. It's a little bit hard to tell. But again, for the uses that we have in mind for this scale, that is gonna be a super important factor. Let's double check our zero real quick. 0, 0.00, negative 0 0.6. Yikes. <laughs> okay, let's see if that's repeatable. If it is, negative 0 0.8, wow. Okay, negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.8. I'm gonna re-tear the scale because to give this sorry piece of precision equipment the best chance possible, uh, we're gonna assume that it's, I don't know, warming up or something, even though I've had this on for quite a while. It auto-offs really quick, so it's, it's kind of difficult actually to, to warm it up. All right, so we're repeating on zero now. Okay, let's go for the 50-ish grain charge weight here. Okay. And the A and D says 49.96, so 0.04 off. 49.96 versus 49.6. So we're about 0.3 off there. 49.6, 49.6. Forty-nine point two, forty-nine point six, forty-nine point six, and forty-nine point six. Repeatability seems a little bit better on that one. Maybe. Again, when I plug this into Excel, that will 
kind of tell the story a little bit better. Okay, so here's the 150-ish grain charge weight. 149.98 versus 149.6, 154. So now we're off by about 0.6 grains. 149.4, 149.2, 149.3, 148.8, wow, let's see if we can get that to reproduce, 149.2, wow, that was a really wild number there, 149.0, wow, the repeatability seems to be kind of really suffering here, 149.0, okay, yeah, I don't know that I would trust this scale with much of anything. And again, with the what you get, you get what you pay for kind of a thing, 0.00, of course that scale is gonna be good. Now we're at negative 0.8, so we're gonna <laughs> zero it again, okay? And now for our 250 grain load, let's say we're gonna trust our life with some 50 BMG powder charge weights here, powder charge measurements. Okay, so let's see, on the good scale we're at 249.94, and on the cheap scale, 250 point two, two fifty 250.2, 250.2, 250.2, 250.2, 250.0, 250.2, 249.4. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. The Amazon listing for this scale was incorrect. It takes different batteries than what were indicated. The scale drifted badly. I don't know if you noticed, but between some of the re-zeroing checks that I did, it was off by 0.8 plus or minus, it was kind of really all over the place. You can't warm up the scale because it auto offs really quick. Precision was lacking. It, it kind of jumped all over the place and then we had the one number that was completely off with the 150 grain weight that we were putting on and off the, the scale. And accuracy also suffered. Off plus or minus, you know, 0.6-ish. I'll have all of the full details and all of the numbers and analysis in the write-up. My consensus on this is this scale might work for very simple things where not a whole lot is on the line. I don't know, cooking or something like that. <laughs> if you have tiny amounts of spices that you're weighing or something, I, I don't know, but it's certainly not something that you'd want to trust your life with with your own reloads. So, this is the starting point. I don't have other numbers in this series to compare this scale to, but as I test more scales, we'll be comparing the drift, the accuracy, the precision, the features, the construction, all of it, one scale versus the next. And I hope this is a really valuable resource for you as you pick a precision scale to buy, as you pick a precision scale with electronic powder dispensing like the Frankfurt Arsenal Tell Dropper, the RCBS Charge Master Lite, and all of those. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I got more related testing coming up. Uh, what did you think of this cheap scale? Drop a comment. Do you have another cheap scale that you think, hey, Gavin, you should have shown the $12 scale. It works good for me. Put it in the comment. Maybe if enough people suggest it, I'll do you know a test on it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.